On this episode of Heartbeats, a 35-year-old mother of three small children elects to have a mastectomy to fight one of the deadliest forms of breast cancer. Now, my worry about you is, what is your chance of being alive in five years? In the barter for life, some parts are expendable. <laughs> and a young woman steals herself to undergo yet another surgery. But will it finally put the memory of a devastating work accident behind her? The scars are a big issue for me because everybody tends to look at your scar. It's a miracle because the hand is still there. Let's hear you play Jingle Balls. Now, do you know how Jingle Balls on your guitar? Yeah. Okay, do you think you guys can play it together? You can have it back. Karen Cantoni is 35 years old and at home full time with her three young children. These are some of my favorite pictures of the kids uh, because they're the last few Halloweens. And this year, the boys decided independently that they were going to be a wolf and a sheep, respectively, not realizing quite how funny that was. So I dressed the baby as Little Red Riding Hood. Less than a year ago, Karen was diagnosed with locally advanced breast cancer, one of the deadliest kinds of breast cancer in women under 40. And your family history of breast cancer? None. Ovarian cancer? No, none. No family history of any form of cancer whatsoever. Karen's cancer produces too much of a chemical called her 2 new It's a chemical associated with tumors that grow very rapidly. Aggressive chemotherapy was needed, fast, and it did shrink her tumor but she's taking no chances. Cancer cells can still be lurking, ready to replicate. So today, Karen's arrived with her husband Frank for surgery to have her entire left breast removed. In the barter for life, some parts are expendable, and this is one of them for me. Maybe not for everyone. So do you have any questions? I just want to make sure you're feeling good. <laughs> don't worry about that. No, I have, I don't, I, no, I just, no, because I'm, I have total confidence that you okay. can do this. Okay. <laughs> Everyone this. tells me that we can do this. Okay? Okay. Okay. It's okay. It's I'll see you in a moment. Okay, great. Thank you. So our goal is to remove all residual disease to give her the best chance of not having any recurrences over the chest or under her arm in the future and also to get an indication of how well she's responded to the chemotherapy. I guess I'm in the zone. I'm, I'm ready. I have to, it has to be done. We've got it all, um, we have it all decided. Uh, Dr. Holloway's excellent. When we're doing this, we don't want to see any of the cancer at all, since the purpose of the procedures to go around the outside and make sure that any disease that remains is contained inside and that we don't cut through it. Now in Karen's case, even if we were to cut into the breast and actually try and find it, I suspect we still wouldn't see anything because anything that's left is likely to be microscopic. Five years ago, a routine work day with an industrial laundry press became a day Ruth McLeod will never forget. How did it happen anyways? Like, how did it... I think, you know, look, with the wheel inside the machine, when the tape goes through, it gets stuck on that because mm -hmm. of the heat, right? Mm -hmm. And I think it was getting stuck, and we were having problems with that machine anyway. And I start to take the, uh, you know, try to get the tape off with the sandpaper, and my hand, it just, just went in, and then it goes in between the roller, and you can't, you can't pull it back out. In an instant, Ruth's life changed forever. She was crushed beneath an old press with 360 degree heat melting her arm. Stay in my life, I'll never forget. Yeah. Left badly mangled, Ruth could have lost her arm were it not for the quick response of the burn unit at Sunnybrook and Women's Health Sciences Center. Since then, she has stayed close to her parents while enduring enormous pain over the course of 12 surgeries to save her arm. If I go back to the day of Ruth's accident, <laughs> 
Oh, I was devastated at that time. And then, as everything progressed, and I watched, and I, I've been there for every accident and uh, operation, and I've watched, and I've seen everything that went on with Ruth. And now I think it's a miracle. Because the hand is still there. Ruth's surgeries have helped her regain most of the use of her arm and hand, yet she's willing to undergo one more surgery, this time to have a tissue expander inserted to help diminish the scars that trouble her day after day. Well, normally I don't even use my right hand. I, I use my left hand, but I can't even, like, even just to, to hold it. You say I don't, I don't have, like, the opposition anymore, so it doesn't turn around for me to even grab the water. There. Once again, <laughs> let's have a look. I mean, I still stretch my fingers and everything. Should I be fixing this as well? That's actually easier to do. Would you like to straighten it out, you mean? Yeah. And I just moved the skin around, so it's like not a big deal. Mm -hmm. And you'll get probably 40 to 50 percent, maybe even more improvement. But oh. that's not why you're here. Mm -hmm. Now, the last time when we did this, the problem was that the expander that we put in, it was causing a lot of pain and problems and problems and no infection. And when I took it out, it was all inflamed inside. Mm -hmm. The number one risk is still infection. Mm -mm. A little bit. <laughs> how much? Not much. Not even a pack what, of What meat. is how much? <laughs> maybe four a day, maybe. You should maybe. really not be smoking when I put these expanders in. It actually increases the risk of Does infection. Okay. Yeah, about 25%. <laughs> what kind of rehabilitation is that? <laughs> now, do you know how long this is in for? We went over this before. I don't remember the exact length of time, but I know it's going to be a while. <laughs> Two months? More? <laughs> this, you huh? forget. This is going to be a big inconvenience for you. Three months would be the shortest that it would possibly be in. Five months would be, that would be long. Like, that's not going to happen. But yeah, having the scars gone is a big issue for me. Because I won't feel so bad when I'm wearing a shirts in the summertime. You know, and everybody tends to look at your scar. Breast surgeon Claire Holloway continues removal of Karen's lymph nodes and left breast. So we finished, the specimen has been removed. Now we're just going to verify the integrity of the motor nerves that we have preserved. May I have a lower, please? Okay. So the nerve to the muscle that controls the shoulder blade is intact. Both the lymph nodes and the breast will now be sent to pathology for detailed analysis. Meanwhile, Dr. Holloway can update Karen's husband, Frank. It's a couple of hours for you. Uh, yeah, I'll give you a little bit of a, a heads up that things were going all right. Oh, good. How did it go? It went very well. Very oh, smooth, absolutely no problems whatsoever. That's the great. Issues. That's both in the breast and the nodes? Yes, we didn't see anything yeah. uh, that looked remotely suspicious in either location. Okay. No and I guess you wouldn't have expected to anyways, no. right? No. So okay. we'll have to wait until we get the final pathology to know whether there's any microscopic disease there or not. Karen and Frank will have to wait two weeks for the final pathology results to learn whether Karen's life is still threatened by any microscopic cells of this deadly disease. For Ruth McLeod, it's been a long journey from the moment she almost lost her right arm five years ago. Badly burned and crushed from a work accident, she's endured 12 surgeries to repair it and had to move back home with her parents. What I'm hoping for, of course, is to cover up the scar that's on my arm here. And now that I know he can actually do something with my fingers, it'll be nice that this finger here, my ring finger, will at least be straight. So that'll be helpful for me in the use of my hand anyway, because now it's pretty much, it's pretty much a useless finger. Ruth is tired of looking at her long scar. Surgery to insert a tissue expander might work to diminish it, but Ruth is afraid. What if it fails? It has before. She comes to a sudden decision. She doesn't want to go ahead with the tissue expander. Instead, she only wants to have her finger operated on. I decided not to for different reasons. One, because I've had it before and 
for some reason or another, my body just wouldn't take it. We don't really know why. And the fact that I'd have to have it for about five months, and it puts a lot of restriction on my arm, and I need to be able to do things. At the last minute, Ruth's surgeon, Joel Fish, has come up with a solution he hopes Ruth will accept, and it's a simple one, to stretch healthy skin over the scar. But there's no guarantee it will work. It's not as good an option because you may not get as much, but there's no harm done in doing one of these guys. Could do this, like where we had the expander before. Mm -hmm. If I think the skin's going to be tight, I'll, oh, I'm just going to put it back, mm -hmm. and we're not going to do it. Okay. I'm going to work tomorrow, right? Uh, if I wanted to. You can. Okay. I would prefer you not. Most recently, she's looked at those scars again and asked herself whether she can, you know, fix them again. And my burn patients, the, or the burn patients that I have, they do this. It's not uncommon that they'll sort of reach a phase and they, they, it's like they want the surgery and they don't at the same time. Most important thing for Ruth and any patient like that is it doesn't matter what you or I think of the scars. The most important thing is what she sees or feels about that scar. These are all burned and they're small, like the pads. Oh, yeah. And that really bothers her when she grips object because she's always hooking the hook of her nail. And that's, yeah, see how this is more normal? It's it. less than a week before Karen learns whether her breast surgery got all of the cancer. Meanwhile, she and husband Frank have gone all out to distract themselves with their son's third birthday party. What's my name? It is your name. How did you know that? You're a good reader. It's too busy to be worried about, about what's really going on behind the scenes. And uh, we kind of like it that way. But that's why we were looking forward to having the party. And that's why we sort of went all out and got him his decorations, his cake, and his brand new guitar. And um, this sounds really ironic. This is something I never would think you would hear yourself saying. It's not ideal to have to ask someone to cut your breast off. But what she did was so perfect. Frank actually tried to tell me, he's like, don't worry, don't worry, guys think scars are cool. It's going to be just fine. And I'm buying this, right? I'm thinking, OK, scars are cool. I'm thinking, what guy thinks scars are cooler than breasts? Burn surgeon Joel Fish is about to try something he can't guarantee will work, to diminish Ruth's unsightly scar without the use of a tissue expander. If I meet somebody for the first time or something, I have the tendency to maybe, you know, cover or kind of go like this, or especially if, uh, you know, there's a certain, you know, with guys or something like that, you tend to hide the scar as much as you can. So let's start from this end and go right through there. The reason I didn't offer this is the first thing is that you see the skin graft here, it's contracted, it's tight. So now you ins put an incision in the skin and I lose ground just to begin with. Yeah. See how far it's coming apart? It's like it doesn't want to go. Isn't that, isn't that depressing? I'm going to need some uh, 4 poly, please. Dr. Fish discovers he needs more skin. He's got no choice but to take skin from close to the scar itself. But will it stretch far enough? If I cut to there, where I get those points together, right. pull it over. After all of that, moving all this around, this is what we're going to get rid of, which is, you know, if we had a tissue expander or a balloon under here to blow this up, maybe it would come over here and, and just be gone. But this isn't a bad alternative. That's why I offered it to her, because we're going to get rid of, I'm not sure, is it about 30% of it. It's actually quite a substantial... Uh, hole that we've made. When the dressing comes down, and not even at that point, but I mean, that's the, the real test, is what Ruth thinks. It's now up to time to heal, before Ruth will discover whether the scar has diminished. I'm just looking forward to having no more surgeries. Ruth's anxiety is high. She wants to see improvement soon to finally move on with her life. Hey, Ruth, thanks Hi. for the cookies. <laughs> Did you hear I didn't, you get, there. To, yeah, I didn't yeah. get to eat them? I said the sandy was. This is not fair. <laughs> and how's this? Um, well, since the operation, it's actually, it's looser. Like, it moves a lot easier now. You don't feel this is too tight? Uh, it's a little tight, but only, like, only when, like, if I go like that, mm -hmm. I feel... Okay. It just depends how I move my arm. Pretty conservative when we move it over, like what I told you. So I'd say we got close to half, eh? Close to half, yeah. What do you think? I think that's beautiful. It's so clean. 
having the scars gone is a big issue for me because I won't feel so bad when I'm wearing uh, shirts in the summertime. Four months after surgery, Ruth's arm has healed well, and for the first time in a while, short sleeve shirts are not a concern. It's, it's taken away a lot of that that you didn't want in there. I feel great about my surgery, yeah. I'm very happy with your arm, and I think it's made a big difference in Ruth as well. I see her as a little more outgoing. Oh. Seven months ago, Karen learned she had a rare and rapidly growing breast cancer that had progressed into the lymph nodes under her arm. Now, two weeks after her mastectomy, she's back to receive the pathology results. It's a little bit, a little, little, little bit nerve-wracking, but it's all right. And I'm, pr I'm tired, but you know, I've been tired for years because I've got all these little kids and I've been pregnant a lot and then I had chemo and now I've had surgery and it's just, you know, it's, it's more of the same. Hi, Karen, nice to see you again. Hi. Okay, so examining you, mm -hmm. you feel beautifully from the operation. The drain is still inside, that's absolutely fine. Mm -hmm. So we're here today to talk about the results of our labours of the last many, many months. Mm -hmm. But if we just take one step back first to remember when you came to me, this was a very large lump within the breast and we could feel it within the armpit. We were terrified. Life looked like it was over. Mm -hmm. And I know when we first met, we were hoping that we would firstly clear the breast of cancer and secondly clear the armpit of cancer. Okay? And that's why when you had your operation, they removed not just the breast but also the lymph nodes in the armpit. Okay. Now I guess you want to hear the results of all your yes. 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 <laughs> Um, I spoke yesterday to the pathologist mm -hmm. and she found no evidence of any cancer in the breast or in the armpit. I thought you were going to work. I knew it was going to work. Okay. Yeah, that's really good. So the news is better than good. That's, okay. That is, right? That's better than good. It's brilliant. You can see there's a genuine desire to help these women. And what we hope is, if we can help the patient with the worst disease, the spin-off will be that all patients with breast cancer will benefit. And so your chances of cure now are extremely good. Way better than when we met on that first day when the cancer was so big. Yeah, you told me you didn't like my cancer when you met me. <laughs> I know. So you have permission to go out and party. <laughs> okay. uh, okay. However, we definitely need to have radiation therapy mm -hmm. to the area where the breast was on the lymph nodes. But doesn't radiation, couldn't radiation cause cancer? It, it can indeed. We know in a certain proportion of patients, a tiny number, 10, 20 years into the future, yes, there is a chance of the radiation causing cancer. However, we know in your situation, at such a young age, the biggest risk for your life from here on in is breast cancer. And what we've got to do is give you the best. Even, even though we know that it's gone at the even moment, with why do you think there might be still one or two yes. left? Because they couldn't look at every single cell Correct. in the pathology. Now is not the time to relax on this cancer. Now is the time to what we say consolidate mm -hmm. the hard work that you put in to give you the best chance of cure. I find that news, uh, it's awesome, it's excellent. But I, I have to admit, I find the news a little unsettling. And, and the reason I think that is, it's kind of washing over me. It's, you know, I've been going for the last five months on 100% self-fueled hope, and, and, and I've been sure, but it's been, it's been me that's been fueling myself, that there's not gonna be a problem, this is going to work, we're gonna do everything possible. And for them to finally give me some concrete news that in fact it actually might be fine, is just a little bit of a, I think I've just exhaled for the first time since October, and it's just, I feel, I feel a little funny. I feel a little bit like, you know, maybe I can relax a bit now. I mean, it's just, it's a little unsettling in a sort of surprising way. That's all. Short answer, I think it feels great. <laughs> <laughs> You're a man. <laughs> Uncomplicated emotional species. <laughs> Karen will undergo 25 sessions of radiation to kill off any microscopic cells. 
the battle's been won, and hopefully soon, the war itself. People look at it as a terrible tragedy, but that's sort of the message that I have to get out here, is that, that what's happened to me has given me a clarity and a perspective that I would not have otherwise had. You know, you just sort of realize that cancer's not something you just sort of, you know, you beat and you move on, and then you never think about it again. Like, you know, you start to think about, well, what if it comes back? And, you know, so there's a little bit of a sort of realization that you kind of are living with this. It's kind of like an interesting paradox. It's something to worry about, but I don't live in fear of dying now. I just live. On the next episode of Heartbeats, a world-traveled couple battles stage four lung cancer. Now, generally, when patients are stage four, they're not curable. And I think it's important for them to maintain what they enjoy in life. Dr. Rung, bless his heart, said, in my heart of hearts, I think we can do something. You know, you just take your life and put it on, on hold. And can a first-time mom-to-be survive a pregnancy complicated by sickle cell disease? I hear some rumors that you were not feeling well yesterday. Mm, the rumors are correct. What's happened? Um, at about 5 in the morning, I just had a severe crisis all over my body. Like, every joint, every muscle, everything just hurt. For more information, go to www.wnetwork.com.